Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music. Well, Spitfire Audio sent me their intimate grand piano to take a look at. I'm a piano player. Seems like a natural fit. Let's dive in. Spitfire's soft piano and its felt piano um, shows up everywhere, right? It's a sort of a foundational sound of almost like a whole style of music. There are Spotify lists of felted piano music, and, you know, it's nice for that dreamy evening vibe. And, you know, no shade. I love it. I love that sound. But sometimes you want a grand piano. I play a grand piano here at the house. um, And uh, instead of an upright, you you want that extra breadth. Well, the uh, Spitfire Originals Intimate Grand Piano is a beautiful sort of kind of reduction of that quality of of piano sound that I associate with, say, a Steinway M, the, the feeling of direct you know, long strings, but not terribly long, you know, in the sort of five and a half to six feet category, slightly aged hammers, maybe a little bit funky. When you load it up, this is what it looks like. And um, I sort of like, really, this is the first time I've played it, the Intimate Grand Piano, and I've chosen their direct patch. I can see that there's a little bit of reverb on it. And uh, I'm, this is just apparently the, um, you can see there, just the condenser mics. Let's listen. And I'm just going to be doing some improvising and maybe I'll just play for a while. pretty playable. Um, I can tell that there's, how to put this exactly, there's, there may be stuff going on under the hood that I'm not aware of, but it's a, it's a very muted sound. Um, I don't think that it's felted per se, but those are very soft hammers. And when I, when I hit it a little bit harder, here comes the hard note, it never gets to the upper partials that I like to hear in a hard piano, but it's okay. This is an intimate piano. It's intended to kind of be a sort of a, a beefier version of, of what we might use a soft felted piano for. Well, that's lovely, but I can tell right away I don't really care for the reverb sound too much, and I'd like to take the tightness down, which will, won't cut into the piano samples as much. So I'll get perhaps a little more, um, I guess I would just say, uh, action noise or, uh, you know, just sort of like a little more liveliness in a way. And then maybe I'll have a little more hammer noise and a little more pedal. Okay, here we go. So it takes complicated harmonies really, really well. And I think the sound of the piano is sort of encouraging me towards um, kind of that that stylistic world, I I guess, yeah. Um, I see we've got, you know, just general control over all these qualities that are up here down here on, on, uh, on the big knob in the middle. And what is this slider here? This is a dynamic variation, right? Um, So 
let's say if I turn this up. Well, that's interesting. So I've got a much like quieter sound down here. Okay, so there's the spanky quality that I was looking for turning up that dynamic slider. There we go. Now it's a little more rock and roll. So I'm playing really quietly, but I'm still getting the top end. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? I think probably that's too much, but yay. So aren't we curious about the other microphones? Yes, we are. Down come the condensers, up go the ribbons. Um, all right, so I'm expecting a sort of a softer, broader feel, perhaps a little less emphasis on the uh, on the initial attack. Oh, that's gorgeous. The stereo picture is really nice with the ribbons. I suspect that the ribbon mic supported by some condenser would be a really good sound. Yes. All right, so let's do one of my favorite tests for a new piano, which I think of as the repetition test. Quiet, louder. Well, it doesn't sound terribly boring, but it is a little, I wonder how many round robins. There's no way for us to know. The Spitfire audio player is not particularly transparent to us as users. There's only certain things we can get at. We don't, we don't know how many round robins there are. Maybe there's documentation somewhere. So that means like complicated uh, events, like if I wanted to do a piano sound like, So on a real piano, this would sound a little different than what I'm getting here. But this is actually useful enough for scoring or for, you know, embedding in other things as well. The repeated tones are always a problem with sample-based instruments. They just are. How many round robins can you have? Well, there's, there's got to be some kind of physical upper limit. A real instrument, every time you play the same note, it's going to be different. Yeah, that's just the way it is. Here's something I love about this piano. I've noticed it with every gesture that I've made so far. So tuning is a big deal on a sample instrument because it's hard, especially with this player. You can't go in and tune individual samples. So I want my fifths to be solid. And these are terrific. In just the right way, there's a slight, you know, you gotta listen for a slight beat in your fifths. Right, it should be wom, wom, wom. Octaves, of course, need to be solid. and they are, there's a little bit of stretch going on. That is to say the higher notes are stretched a little bit high and the low notes stretch just the tiniest bit lower. Tuning is really important because the sound of a piano has a lot to do with how well it's tuned. And a lot of the time that doesn't mean exactly perfect equal temperament but rather an artistic tuning. And this feels to me like a, like a beautiful piano tuner had got their hand on it. I'm, I'm very particular about the tuning in my sample pianos. A lot of time those perfect tuned sample pianos just don't sound good to me. You 
want to hear some presets, right? Uh, it, it works just like everything else. So we heard direct and then I messed with it. Um, intimate. Lots of hammers, lots of pedal. Feels like the mics are right there inside the instrument. Makes sense. Um, soft drama, okay. Lots of reverb. Oh, and the binaural is in here. We're gonna have to listen to the binaural by itself. Sounds a little further away, but I think it would be great for scoring. Mm-hmm. Subdued. And the expression, the uh, velocity release slider is quite low. So even if I spank it really, really hard, I'm just not getting those uh, loud notes at all. Reverberant ribbons, a ribbon mic with binaural. You know, I think that the binaural mics, it's probably one of those heads, are taking the reverb really nicely. Ambient, okay, just the binaural mics and a good amount of reverb. So is this really what I like? Yeah, like, so I like this ambient, but I want a little more bark. There we go, that's much better. I just took that expression slider up. Not bad at all. I should put on the headphones and try the binaural. Well, what's great about the binaural is this, this beautiful stereo picture as I go from high to low or really hear the extremes. Uh, it, it sounds like just sitting in front of a piano and there's something just really appealing about that. And in fact, what's appealing about this library is the experience of playing it. If you're a pianist, I think you will really enjoy digging into this. Repeated tones are okay. I mean, I'm, I'm a sucker for... Um, uh, a lot of round robins. It's really important to me. I think there are enough. It's okay. Um, the tuning is fantastic, and I love the way the ribbon mics sound. The binaural gives me a beautiful stereo picture, and I think that with support of the condensers, the ribbons are probably the way to go for me. Spitfire Audio Player is a, um, it's a sort of a don't worry, we'll take care of you kind of situation. It's sort of like the Catholic Church of sample players. But um, it does the job, right? It's got the controls you need to get the sound done. And this is a very reasonably priced library. And it was $29, something like that. Am I remembering this right? That's impressive. Well, it's kind of a no-brainer in a way, certainly for a piano player. Fun. Hope this was useful. Like and subscribe. Ding the bell. You'll be notified when I do videos. You know, the whole drill. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.